Many of these earthing and grounding companies will say that the outlets are 100% safe and that there's no problems. However, that's not true. We have a master electrician in the earthing and grounding group on Facebook who has inspected thousands of homes. And he has said that basically about 50% of homes are not wired correctly. So because the standards are variable and even if they are wired correctly, the electrical system in the house is made for appliances. So, that, so therefore code says that there can be up to two to four volts and up to one milliamp of stray electricity in the ground wire. That's acceptable. It is not the same as connecting to the earth outside. It is not true. And just because the resistance of the body is higher than outside, because ideally the home grounding rod should be less than 25 ohms, does not mean that electricity will always flow directly to the ground 100%. It's actually divided proportionately. So if your resistance on your skin is say, let's say a thousand ohms or 10,000 ohms or even 100,000 ohms and the grounding rod outside is 25 ohms, if there is electricity flowing through the ground wire, it's distributed proportionately to the ground and to the body. It's not 100% just to the earth. You can check other electricians' videos and websites and articles. It is proportional. It is a lie to say that electricity will always travel to the point of least resistance and not enter into another point that has higher resistance. That is completely false. So therefore, when I asked Dr. Milham, what happens when we connect the human body to an outlet with stray electricity, his answer was very terse. He said, you will shorten your life. So therefore, if you wanna use the outlet, you have to make sure it is completely zero alternating current in that wire. If there's no electrical current in the ground wire of your outlet, there can't be dirty electricity because dirty electricity is associated with electrical current. So therefore, if you just rule out current completely, it will be safe to ground with your outlet. If you are in a place where you can't use a grounding rod, use the NCB. I know it's expensive, but the NCB will effectively filter any stray electricity coming from the outlet to your grounding product to your body. And that was created by Andrew McAfee. And you can see the video here where I interview him and he goes into in depth the discussion of the NCB and also what it does and what happens when you have stray electrical currents enter the human body. I use a Fluke 287 meter, which is actually the state of art meter and has actually been deemed to be medical grade measuring too. So Dr. Milham wrote a paper on how the Fluke 287 is an excellent meter to measure human body voltage in terms of monitoring the effects of EMF on the human body. The negative lead is connected to a grounding rod outside. So I have a grounding rod that's about one foot long and it's inserted into the ground and then there's a 40 foot wire connected to it. So that's what the meter is grounded to. So when you check your body voltage, the best way to check your body voltage is to ground the meter to the earth outside so that when you measure a body voltage, it is in respect to the earth outside. So when it reads a certain voltage in your body, like four volts AC, that is in reference to the earth outside. That means you are uh, higher, your body is higher by four volts in respect to the earth. The first thing to do is to use a three light ground checker supplied by many of these earthing and grounding companies. Now, this is important to use to rule out any major electrical wiring issues, but this only rules out major problems. When these two orange lights turn on, it means this outlet or strip is absence of any major electrical problems or wiring. However, it doesn't say how clean the outlet ground is. To check for that, I use a basically, this is a ground splitter. It has basically plastic prongs where the live wire and the neutral wire is. 
So it's not conductive at all. The only metal prong is the third prong, which will go into the outlet ground. These two prongs here are connected to the ground wire, which is connected to my house electrical system. I take the red lead of the Fluke 287, set on microamps. So we don't wanna measure milliamps. Milliamps is really high. If you have milliamps of electrical current in your outlet ground, you're really in trouble. You wanna measure in microamps because anything greater than one microamp can be harmful to the human body. So in my electrical system, I have over 43 microamps of stray electricity in the electrical ground. My house is a brand new house that's valued at like over a million dollars. It is well constructed. It has the highest quality materials, but you should really watch the video by Andrew McAfee on why even expensive houses, there is a variation of quality in what they use and the types of electrical wires and shielding. And so in this house, even though this is a modern brand new house, I have over 43 microamps of stray electrical current running in my ground wire. I do not want to ground using an outlet in my home. So I'm gonna tell a personal story to emphasize the importance of checking the stray current in the outlets. So I mainly have used outlets to ground. I've used sometimes grinding rods, but mainly outlets. And my previous homes, I was lucky and I never measured the straight currents because I just basically believed what was told out there in cyberspace that basically outlet was the same as the earth. Therefore, use it. So I blindly believed that. The research papers use outlets. But when I dived into it and I found that the NICU baby study used a special outlets for the babies, that made a lot of sense because we go through in research, we have to submit to a institutional review board. There was no way an IRB would approve the babies to be connected to the outlet this, it, themselves. So therefore, it had to be a special outlet. And indeed, if you read the paper, is a special outlet that's isolated from all the other electrical wiring and it's a dedicated grounding rod to the earth outside. So when I read that, I'm like, whoa, there might be something to this because I was having right shoulder pain that was about seven out of 10 pain. And I was having like, when I moved into this new house, I had basically that pain in the right shoulder and I never had that pain before. It was just so crazy painful. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't lift it. I, if I slept on it wrong, it was really hurting. Then finally, I was listening to people on the earthing and grounding forums when they're describing electrical pollution type symptoms when they use the outlet with their grounding mats and products. So I decided to buy a good meter, the Fluke 287, and measure the electrical current that's coming out of the ground wire of my outlets. And in my bedroom, it's actually over 83 microamps. In this studio here, it's only above 43 microamps. But remember, I told you that the threshold of safety is probably one microamp. And so I decided to use a grounding rod. So I slept with a grounding mattress cover and also a grounding rod outside. And within weeks, my right shoulder felt better. It went from a seven out of 10 pain to about a one to two out of 10. And now it's about a one out of 10. But months later, probably about four months later, I'm still having some pain if I move it completely not right. So I went to the orthopedic surgeon, they got an MRI scan, and I have a severe labral tear and maceration of the labrum. That's how bad it was. It's probably from years of playing baseball and softball and overthrowing the ball. And I felt shoulder pain for many years. And, but lately it flared up because it flared up when I connected to an outlet with stray electricity. And I know that in medicine, if I remove something and haven't changed anything at all, it must be that thing that it was a cause. So when I removed the stray electricity and went to a grounding rod outside, it was the stray electricity that made it worse. But here's the caveat. Even though the orthopedic surgeon will recommend surgery on my shoulder, I don't need to because I'm still functional. I'm only at one out of 10 pain. I actually have labral tears in both of my shoulders. And it's probably from years of doing a lot of pull-ups and lots of push-ups. And 
What's amazing about this is that the earthing and grounding has kept my pain to a level where I probably won't need surgery for a while. And the take home message is that yes, earthing and grounding will help with the inflammation. And because it helped with the inflammation, it reduced the pain enough that I don't need surgery. But the underlying cause of my pain was a labral tear of my shoulder. Earthing and grounding didn't fix it. So earthing and grounding doesn't cure that. So if you are earthing and grounding and you're having problems, first check if there's stray currents in your outlets. If after that you still have pains and aches, go see a doctor. Seek medical help to identify if there's any underlying causes. So remember, earthing and grounding helps with inflammation, but it doesn't cure the underlying disease that you have. So it's not a panacea. It's not something that will cure everything, but it's something that will help you in your inflammation and management of other medical issues that you may have.